champions from Wiesbaden Fitness Center in beautiful Wiesbaden, Germany. My name is Luke Burns, alongside my partners Jesse Granger and Airman Michael Mason. We're going to go down to our sideline reporter, Victoria Secret, standing by with the Bitburg Barons coach, Lynn Hairstone. Victoria? I'm courtside with Coach Hairstone, the coach of the Bitburg Barons. Now, Coach, the two teams are tied right now. What do the girls need to do to pull ahead? We need to play defense. We need to make our shots, our first shots, and we really got to pick, the, pick up our fast break. All right, now how do you feel the team's doing so far in the game? One to ten. Right now we're doing a seven. We're making minimal mistakes. We have team fouls. We're still not making our first shot. We're doing okay on defense, but we got to do a better job on D. We got to pick that ball up. Okay, and now I've noticed in the crowd there are tons of supporters from Bitburg. How does that make you feel as the coach? Always oh, good. We're a big family at Bitburg, and that's how it is. All right, well, coach, good luck in the second half. Okay. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. Victoria. Well, gentlemen, what are your impressions of the first half? We got an 18 18 ball game. You know, it's like they're starting scratch here. What did you see, Jesse, from the Ansbach Cougars in that first half? That's right, it's anybody's game now. And I think in the first half, we, we saw a lot of different looks. You saw both teams go to the press, uh, both teams using different looks uh, on their zone defense. And I think in the second half, they're going to focus in on what worked best for each team and try to use that going forward to win the game. What about the Bitburg Barons, Mason? We saw that they got off to a slow start but managed to creep back into the ball game right before the half to tie it up. Hey, you know, I, I think that if you ask any of them on Bitburg, defense is always going to be their, their main key thing. And if you told them that they would be tied 18-18 coming out of the half, they'd probably be pretty happy because Ansbach likes to run and push. And Bitburg's got them to slow down. So 18-18 ball game. It's like starting over again in the first half, in the second half, 0-0. Zero, zero. You're watching live coverage of the Dodge 2013 Tournament of Champions on the station that's serving America's best, AFN. This solemn promise allows us all the opportunity to pause because that's what professionals do. To pause to look inward at who we are, what we stand for as professionals. Ultimately, Operation Solemn Promise is a constant reminder of why we all serve. I'm gonna need to step out of the car, sir. Back to the Dodds 2013 Tournament of Champions from the Wiesbaden Fitness Center as we are at the half of the Women's Division II Championship, Bitburg and Ansbach tied up 18-18. And if you wanna join in the conversation at any point, you can do that by emailing us at doddsbb2013 at gmail.com. That's D-O-D-D-S-B-B. 2013 at gmail.com. Speaking of which, we previously had the furthest email come from South Florida, a little bit from Georgia. Now we're moving out west, Missouri. We've got a Lady Barons fan and New Mexico Lady Barons fan. But the one that I want to talk about is from Kevin Calvin, who uh, said, What do you think about those Ansbach cheerleaders? First place Division II cheerleading squad. During the halftime while we were away, the head, I don't know if he was a head cheerleader, but a senior for Ansbach, one of the men who placed all tournament as an individual, as well as coming in first, sat out there and held a cheerleader above his head, lifted them up 30 times, basically doing a bench press with this cheerleader above his head. And the crowd was counting along the whole time, along for the ride, as he was struggling on 28, barely got 29, and, and then, then found a little bit extra for just number to 30. Out that 30. Calvin also said he wanted to give a shout out to Coach Hunt, who is the most awesome band teacher he's ever had. And we're back to the action for the second half. Tie ball game, Division II, Ladies Championship, Ansbach Cougars and Bitburg Barons. Atia Brigman over to Lackey, shots up and it's good. Brianna Lackey getting it started for the Barons. 
taking the early lead, 20 to 18. And a door on the right side, looking for Solis, who takes it strong, up and in, answering right back. Here we go, both teams looking to get hot in the second half. And they're right back to the game plan, full court pressure and just feeding Solis in the post. And to get the turnover, as Reeves looks to pass the ball up, and Ja'Kiah Smith with the easy layup. Coach Michael Hunt saying that is his favorite type of shot. The one right underneath the basket that goes in. High percentage shots, that's all he wants his team to do. We had a chance to talk to him and he was saying that during the season, the only time he really felt like his team wasn't performing was when they were missing the easy stuff. They always play tough defense, they're always high energy, but when they miss the easy stuff, they get into a bit of a trouble. They lost the first game of the season and then went on to steamroll the rest of their games all the way through the tournament, all the way up to today. 7.06 left to go in the third period. Ansbach up, 22, 20 over the Lady Barons. Brigman control the ball. Over to Thornton. Lackey looking for some space, can't find anything in that zone defense. Brigman to Lackey, shots up and it's swatted by Solus, he's looking for the long outlet. But Brigman, by far the quickest on the court, and it's not gonna happen when she's got Elaine to run for the ball. And the three second violation on the Barons, Cougar ball. They're trying to be more patient on offense there, but sometimes you can be too patient, especially if one of your centers is camped out in the lane. Got a shout out to Demia Thornton. She's a freshman, made the team on the varsity squad on the court in a Division II championship high school basketball game. Quite Brigman an up and good with the left hand to tie the ball game. 22-22, 6-14 left to go in the third period. Four quick buckets here to start the half. If, if they're going to continue to score like that, we may see a barn burner tonight. Lackey to inbound for the Barons. Looking for Thornton. Back to Lackey. Stops, pops, and nails it. Leaving the hand up a little bit. Just let everybody know that she properly followed through. Reeves across half court. Shot from downtown. Ja'Kiah Smith just off. Five fifty-two left to go in the third period. You're watching live coverage of the Dodds 2013 Tournament of Champions Division Two Ladies Final. Lackey across half court. Got Thornton on the left. Chooses instead to go with Oliver on the right. He nails it off the glass. Bitford now converting on some of these open looks and now taking a four point lead and that's gonna coach, Coe's, excuse me, cause coach, easy for me to say, Michael Hunt to call timeout. Yeah, he's gonna wanna talk that over. Bitburg's getting a lot of the stuff they, they really want. Uh, the, uh, the Cougars are gonna have to make it a little tougher on them. Coach Lynn Hairstone dialing up a play there on the old whiteboard. Anytime you see a coach bring out the whiteboard, he sees something that he does not like, and he wants you to change it immediately. And a lot of the times when you're a player out there on the court, and you know you're getting the momentum going in your way, and you see that other coach call a timeout, it's the best feeling in the world. It just gets you so hyped because you know that you're doing something that they don't have an answer for. It's also a good way to take the crowd out of it, keep that momentum from bringing the house down. Cougar ball. Lock it to inbound, and they're face guarding Reeves now. But well, once the ball comes in, they're gonna go ahead and let her cross. Kukula to Solis, looking for some space, making it. And the foul on Brianna Lackey, and she doesn't like it. It looked like it was a lot of ball on that one, but it's easy for me to judge because I'm sitting up here not down there. Well, they're gonna take the basket away. Chiefs to inbound, excuse me, Chelsea Reeves to inbound. 
And that's where they want her, right under the basket, to be able to make easy shots like that. And Solis really putting her stamp on the offensive side, and we didn't really see that in, in the round robin play or in the semifinal. And she was more of a defensive threat in that semifinal game, and they were looking to Chelsea Reeves to provide the offense, but not this game. In the round robin game, the only time I saw her step up offensively was when Chelsea wasn't on the court. So a little bit of a change up for the Cougars, but maybe that's all that the Barons are giving them. Breaking the pressure with passes. Now, Jesse, is that something you want to do when you have full court pressure? Do you want to put the ball on the floor? Do you want to try to dribble your way through it, or would you prefer to pass your way through a full court press? Well, if you're talented enough to dribble through it, that's a, that's a good option, but typically you're going to have to pass around it. And that's going to slow down your offense, but it's also going to give you a chance to get something uh, before the full defense gets set up. So they're kind of leaving a back door for them. Ball goes back to the Cougars. We've moved our furthest viewer on out west even further. Now we've got a, another Lady Baron fan who's all the way out in San Francisco, Cali. You're neck of the woods. What's Luke. I heard a rumor that California knows how to party. <laughs> like nobody else, my friend. If you can't believe Tupac, who can you believe? 4.56 left to go in the third period. You're watching live coverage on AFM providing 70 years of broadcasting excellence to military service members and their families around the globe. And you can also pick us up on AFMEurope.net live streaming to any computer with an internet connection. Turnover, Brigman up and under, and two more points for the Barons as they had a hard time getting any offense going in that first period. They got a little bit closer going into half, and now they're coming out shooting and firing on all cylinders, Jesse. Well, that their defense is leading to easy baskets. They're getting, uh, they're turning over Ansbach and, and really using that uh, pressure to their advantage. 4.41 left to go in the third period. Bitburg up, 28, 22. Chelsea Reeves runs out of space, picks up her dribble over to Sullis, who's looking to get the ball down to Smith down low. It's deflected, hands all over the ball. Jump ball, possession arrow, going to Ansbach. Excuse me, Bitburg. Thornton up the left side, looking for some help. Finding it from Morrison. He gets the ball to Lackey, can't convert. Brigman picks up the loose ball. Shot from Thornton, can't go. And a foul called. And it looks like there might be some, maybe some blood on the uniform. As the referees called an official's timeout. And Alyssa Solis to come off the court. And a door to replace her for the Cougars. It's unfortunate because Solis was just starting to get a little fan base email action saying how she was just being a beast in the paint, taking control of things down low. Yeah, they're going to miss her for a moment, but I'm sure they're going to try to figure this out and get that blood taken care of. Brigman now. Over to Oliver. Over to Thornton. Madamba looking to feed the post. Morrison to Brigman. Bouncing around. Brigman saves it off Thornton and picked up by the Cougars. Chelsea Reeves now to start the offense for the Cougars. But Brigman is all over the ball. Reeves can't find any space and they're essentially taking her out of this ball game offensively. And a foul called, push on Demaya Thornton. So looks to me based on what they were doing on the sidelines that Solis just scraped her knee. She's coming back on the court now but you can see the, the massive amount of tape that they've bandaged around her left knee and not a moment too soon for Ansbach they'll want to press that uh, advantage the rest of this quarter and Adora looking for the shot it's just long picked up by Smith she's going to go ahead and reset looking for Reeves who's got the shot and it's just short Soli's picking it up and in it's like you're a mind reader Jesse <laughs> predicting the future we need to go to Atlantic City right now I know it's a long ways away but I'm feeling lucky. I think Monaco's a little closer. There you go. You don't have to be a psychic to see that she's been a huge factor this game. They're really riding her. Michelle Morrison converting for the Barons. 
three ten to go, and there's a turnover. Oliver with the steal. Brigman back to Oliver, and it's in, but there's a travel call, no basket. Oh, that's unfortunate. They're waving it off. Bidford's done such a good job of being patient and hitting the open man. Coach was not happy about that one. 301 left to go in the third period now. Bitburg up 30-26 now is the score. And some heavy contact as Reeves was bringing the ball across, or excuse me. And the crowd is not pleased. That was Caprice Lockett looking to drive. And it, I think everyone in here thought that was clearly going to be offensive and charge. She was doing her best bulldozer impression on that one, just coming down the court. And a door from downtown. Short and the ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, that's a tough call to make, but these refs don't have uh, instant replay, so they've got to make a split second decision. I know how they feel. Neither do we. We're doing pretty good here with our AFN coverage, and maybe, maybe you know, sometime in the future we can get some of that instant replay. As we see the priest lock it, converting on the layup, making it a two point ball game now. With 2.33 left, Bitburg up 30, 28 over the Onsbach Cougars. Onsbach trying to use some transition offense to mount a comeback. Jakaya Smith deflecting the ball in the full court pressure. It's 2.28 left to go in the third period. Bitburg up 30 to 28 over the Onsbach Cougars. Brigman puts another one in, bringing the score to 32, 28 now. With the Barons up by four, and Solis converting the basket, but it's waved off with another travel call. And I don't know, I don't know what I got to do about this traveling thing. We've watched at least what 15, 16 games over the last two days, and if I could say there's been one theme so far, it's been this traveling call. Wow, that's tough. Just waving off good baskets. It's cost both teams a bucket in the last 30 seconds. I'm just, I, I get the impression that at some point, all the referees got together before the tournament and said, this is gonna be our focus. You know, we're not gonna allow any minor shuffling of the feet or if they're on the ground fighting for a ball, get possession and roll over, we're just gonna call it. Is that something that you guys are seeing as well? It yeah. looks to me like any time they can blow the whistle and call traveling, they're calling it. Sometimes even when I'm like, I don't even think that was traveling. Well, you've gotta enforce the standard. Chelsea Reeves can't hold on the ball as Brigham's been all over her, and it's a foot race. Foul on Chelsea Reeves. A little hip check from her. Yeah, that was out of frustration right there. What do you say, Jesse? She just said, you know what? I'm not even going to deal with this. Take your two shots. Well, she was taking away their coach's favorite shot, that layup. You don't want to uh, allow easy baskets in transition. Sometimes a hard foul is what's called for. Atia Brigman now to the line for two as the Barons are up 32 at 28 with a minute 44. I, I think we have a technical on the floor. Chelsea did kind of come over and throw a, a brace over to the sidelines out of frustration. That might have been what they called for the technical on. And now Brigman's going to get to shoot the technical and stay on the line for two shots for the foul. And you never want to see that, especially in a close like game like this with so much on the line. One point could mean everything. A lot of emotions here at the Dodds 2013 Ladies Division II Basketball Championship from the Wiesbaden Fitness Center here in Germany. <laughs> Brigham making one of the two from the Tech. Oliver to inbound. Evidently, they forgot about the shooting foul. I'm not sure if the technical foul just oh, supersedes. They might have changed the, the shooting foul into the technical. Actually, you know what? I think that's what it was. They might have gotten a... Um, Could have been a flagrant. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it was a flagrant. Two shots and the ball back. Chelsea Reeves to set, reset the offense. Karen Kukula with the travel car. It's 
not just the viewers at home who are getting in on the email action. Well, uh, Eric Majorwitz, who called the last game, just shot us an email and pointed out that uh, maybe an end around would get him going since he knows how much I dislike the football play in the end around. Just kind of poking a little fun at me. Solis picking off the pass from Brigman, looking to Reeves, who's all alone. Cannot convert, oh, and the ball's tough. pulled down by Brady Oliver. And the Barons come roaring back in the other direction. Lose the ball, and they're fighting hard out there as Kukula not giving up the loose ball. They're I haven't seen it. this many elbows thrown since the last time I watched the UFC. It's getting real physical out there. As you can tell, these ladies know that this is the last game of their season, and for the seniors, maybe the last game of their career. They got nine minutes left. They're leaving it all on the floor tonight, but they're going to want to be careful. Uh, Ansbach is just one foul away from being in the penalty, and that'll mean free throws the rest of the game for the other team. So Elise and steal out to Reeves, who's all alone. Let's see if she can convert this one. A little too strong as she came in. Hot on the layup. Kukura scooping it back up. Trying to get the Cougars another look. And Dor to hoist the three. It's off. So Elise the board and the foul. Ansbach with a lot of transition opportunities, but just having trouble converting. That could come back to bite them at the end of the game. Foul called on Brandy Oliver. Alyssa Solis now to the line. All the players out on the court are kind of sucking air, trying to get their breath back after running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in the last 10 seconds of clock time. A lot of short grabbing going on out there. 36 seconds left to go in the third period. Solis hitting the free throw. And that's going to move him to within three as the score is now, excuse me, yeah, three, as the score is now 33-30. Score's going nuts here at the stadium. Can't tell what's going on. I think they agreed on 30, 33. They just got three points from hitting the first free throw and then lost two points from hitting the second one. Another costly turnover. As the third period is coming to a close, Bitburg 33, Ansbach 30. Reeves to door on the right side, looking to get it to Solis in the post. There's nothing there. Caprice Lockett with the shot off. Solis picking up the board and in. One point game all of a sudden. She has really come through for them today. Seven seconds left as Brigman is looking for the shot. No call on that. Off the glass, nothing. They're fighting for the rebound. And a jump ball called right as the third period comes to a close. One point ball game, 33 for Bitburg. Onsbach Lady Cougars, 32. Coach Michael Hunt trying to make some adjustments as we're getting into the fourth period. If Ansbach wins, you can't say that they didn't leave blood, sweat, and tears on the court. And you can see the passion in these coaches, the passion in these ladies. Up on the screen right now is the Ansbach Cougar cheerleaders, who did take first place, Division II. Which we televised for the first time on AFN, and I know a lot of people are very happy to see us include not only the basketball championships, but also the cheer championships. And what was really interesting about the cheer championships is this crowd was full of fans from all of the Dodd schools. And they were all cheering on every different school's cheerleaders as they went up there. And now we're gonna go down to our sideline reporter, Victoria Seacrest. Victoria, what do you got? who's a junior from Ansbach High School. And now, Brian, being a basketball player yourself, how do you think the girls are playing? I think the girls are playing, they're doing a really good job. They're uh, playing really hard, playing good offense and defense, and they're, they're fighting for the championship. Exactly, it would be great to have that title. And a pull through, what do you think they need to do? Uh, I think they need to work together, pass the ball, and uh, just pretty much have teamwork and continue to make shots, because we need it right now. And how important do you think showing your support, having the entire uh, boys basketball team here, how important is that to the girls? I think it's very helpful to the girls because it helps 
lift them up and then enthusiate them to do a better job. All right, well, good luck to, to your team. Thank you. Back to you guys. So here we go. We're starting the fourth period of this 2013 Ladies Division II Championship. Kukula scoring early for the Onsbach Cougars, giving them the lead 34-33 with 7.35 left to go in the championship game for Division II. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've all been waiting for, the season on the line. Fourth quarter, one point ball game. Who wants it more? How and long have you been waiting to say, this is the moment we've all been waiting for? Three quarters. I think it was the moment that he's been waiting for, <laughs> saying that. Dodds, BB2013 at gmail.com, D-O-D-D-S-B-B2013 at gmail.com. If you'd like to send us an email, we're trying to see where we can get the furthest email from right now. So San far, it's in NorCal, where I'm from, San Francisco. What? Thank you for listening Did and get watching. Did another one from AFM. Vegas. Mm, Nevada. Can't do it's it. not further. Yeah. But I just, you know. I heard Vegas knows how to party, too. I heard that somewhere. I think I've seen. But apparently, every time anyone comes back from there, they never say anything about what they did. It's really bizarre. It's like a black hole that Las Vegas. And Onsbach now with 16 fouls, uh, putting them in the penalty meaning Bitburg will be shooting free throws the rest of the game as long as there's a foul on the floor. And Morrison can't convert on the back half. Jump ball, possession arrow for Onsbach. Bitburg, of course, has five team fouls, so just one more to go until, until they're in the penalty as well. Lackey looking for some space. Gets a shot off. Misses everything, and Solis pulls down another board, and she's got to be closing in on 15, 16 rebounds by now. She has to be sitting at a double-double. We don't have a, a statistician up here in the booth with us, but if we did, I, I would bet money that Solis has got a double-double. Not enough privates in the AFN organization. We don't have a bunch of PFCs running around tallying stats, unfortunately. It's kind of an NCO top-heavy organization. So maybe we can get some young buck sergeants to do it. And Onsbach going to that full court press. And another board pulled down by Alyssa. Anna Dora looking to get the ball to Reeves. Brigman right on, that's not going to happen. The shot's up and short. Caprice Lockett can't convert as Lackey coming back, looking for an open Valbuena. Valbuena shaking her hand. She's got a couple fingers taped together already on that hand. She might have re-injured them on that play. And it looks like Bitburg wants to push it, get as many opportunities as they can in transition. Ansbach using a much slower approach. So with 6.26 left to go in the 2013 Women's Division II Championship, Ansbach up by one over the Lady Barons. Looking for Solis on the inbound, stolen by Morrison. And then Ataya turns it over and a foul called on the play. Frenetic action there on the court. So we can't tell who's doing what. Ball change in possession, second to second. And Bitburg's really keyed in on Solis. They, they don't want her to have the ball anywhere near the basket without at least two or three defenders on her. And they gotta do something because they haven't ever stopped her until this point. If you just saw the score flip on your screen and you're wondering why all of a sudden Bitburg went down and Ansbach went up, there's a slight technical error on our part. We got it fixed though. The score is correct now on your screen. And you're gonna see something interesting now here from Alyssa Solis as she shoots free throws from a good two feet from behind the charity strike. And just short, so maybe she should move up that extra couple feet. <laughs> That would have been square in the heart of the basket. But it's been working for her up until this point, so we're well, not going to change it in the championship game. Yeah, and we're probably going to see more of that uh, in the closing minutes of this game. It's been a long tournament for these ladies. Lackey dribbling through the pressure from the Cougars and nailing it. And it's off the Cougars, Barron's ball. 
5.59 left to go in the ball game. Bitburg now up by one over the Lady Cougars. Championship ball game. Six minutes left. Lackey dishing it back to Oliver. She can't convert. Salis and Oliver fighting for the rebound. Jump ball, possession arrow for the Cougars. And the door to inbound. Face guarding Reeves. They're not going to let her get at the ball. Come across the court. And now she gets her hands on it. Back to door on the right side. Looking to get it to Solis, but they're not letting that happen as well. Reeves to reset. Over to door on the right. Back to Reeves at the top. Kukula on the left side. And Reeves will start all over again. Tough defense from Thornton on Reeves. Solis to drive up and no good, but a foul called. And that's gonna go against Brandy Oliver, who's been banging with Solis all night. And that's gonna send Oliver to the bench and bring Whitney Corley in for her. That Bitburg zone defense really closed down a lot of options for Ansbach, but they took their time and were patient and got the ball inside to the player that's been helping them along the whole game. Well, that's the last we're going to see of Oliver as she has fouled out of the ball game now. And, and Corley on for Oliver. So at least hitting the front end. So I got a clarification on that technical that wasn't a technical if you'd like to hear from uh, Les in, Cal in South Carolina says that it, they changed it to an intentional foul and that's why they got two shots and the possession of the spot nearest the foul. He also said that those walks are walks <laughs> and those calls are correct and that the officials are doing an excellent job. I just would like to be clear that I never said that the officials weren't doing an excellent job. I just would like to let them see things slide a little bit, you know, spirit of the law versus letter of the law. Let them play. Morrison breaking the tie. 37-35 now. Bitburg up over Ansbach with 4.40 left to go in the ballgame. Division II championship game. Live from Wiesbaden, Germany. Solis down low, hitting a cut, a cutting Lockie can't convert. Lackey with the board, taking it herself and looking for Morrison, who's by herself up and cannot get it to fall. That ball was halfway down. Go to your home ball, she screams as she runs back up the court. Chelsea Reeves now slowing it down. Looking for Solis, the top of the key. Over to Kukula. Can't hit, but Anna Dorr steals back to Solis down low and in. That's some quality basketball right there. Turn on the sprinkler systems. Uh, Alyssa Solis is on fire. Dodds BB2013 at gmail.com, D-O-D-D-S. BB2013 at gmail.com if you want to get your emails in. We only have three minutes and 43 seconds left to go in this amazing tie ball game for the Division II Ladies Championship. Ansbach Cougars and Bitburg Barons putting on a show. Lock it over the door, looking for Solis. Morrison's not gonna let that happen for the Barons. Chelsea Reeves looking for space. Guarded closely by Demaya Thornton. And nice Reeves to hoist it from downtown off the back of the iron. Lock it back to Reeves. To Solis, to Anna Dorr. Can't convert, lock it goes back up. It's bouncing around and it won't fall. And a foul called. Ball's gonna go over to the Bitburg Barons. 3.02 left to go in a tie ball game. Both teams in the bonus. Atia Brigman back in. That's gonna send Whitney Cordley to the bench. A little confusion with the refs trying to figure out if it, it is a one and one, if they made it into the bonus yet or not. The scoreboard says they're in the bonus. It should be a one and one. 
between the scorers and the refs. They'll get it figured out. So here we go, tie ball game, three minutes left to go. Both coaches are gonna sit and talk about it for a little bit. Coach Lynn Hairstone rallying the Barons for three more minutes and all they got. Coach Michael Hunt doing the same for his Lady Cougars. Make sure that you tune in to our next game, which is gonna be the Division II Boys Championship at North taking on Naples. And if that one's anywhere near as good as this one, I'm sure it'll be a fun one to watch. Jump onto social media. If you've got a Facebook account, if you're on Twitter, let people know what's going on. You can let them know they can stream it no matter where they are around the world, deployed at a remote location. If they got an internet connection, they've got the 2013 Dodge Basketball Tournament of Champions streaming at afneurope.net, afneurope.net. You can feel it ramping up now. I'm feeling the energy here. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous for these ladies as they've got three minutes left to go. A tie ball game. Both teams in the bonus. It's anyone's game at this point. Caprice Lockett with her fifth foul, and so she's done for the day. Evidently, the next foul will put the... Big Bird Barons in the bonus. Brigman over to Lackey. Shots up and off. But Danba can't convert. But the Barons follow it up and take the lead by two with 2.39 left to go in the game. And a door on the right side looking to drive to the basket. Finish it on her own. The ball's up and short. Rebound by Madamba. Lackey to Morrison. Over to Madamba. Morrison gets the rebound and is fouled on the play. It's gonna send her to the line for two. Up by two with 2.18 left to go in the fourth. Timeout on the floor as Coach Michael Hunt wants to talk it over with his Cougars. Both teams getting into foul trouble. And if you want to send us an email, we got two minutes and 18 seconds left to go of the Dodds 2013 Division II Ladies Championship. It's Dodds at BB2013 at gmail.com. You can see the email address there, right there on your screen. Get out a pad and paper, write it down. Even if you don't email us during this broadcast, you can email any of the broadcast crews into our coverage that's going to go late into the evening as the men's division one gonna be the final game. That starts at 7.30, and we'll probably end up around 10. Hopefully it doesn't go to overtime. Last night's game between Wiesbaden and Ramstein in the semifinal get into the championship game. One of the Wiesbaden players was injured. We'll get to that later. Yeah. And uh, that game went into overtime, heartbreaker. If you wanna hear an incredible story about how both teams got the D1 championships. We were there at that game, and we're gonna be broadcasting that one as well. The broadcast crew that you're listening to right now. But we're gonna be handing it off to another crew right after this one for the Division II Boys Championships. AF North taking on Naples directly after the Barons and the Cougars decide who wants it more for the Division II Ladies Championship as Morrison ready to take her free throws. Just got a flood of emails showing some support for Ansbach. They're gonna need it. They're down three right now. Morrison's first free throw is good, making it a three-point ball game with 2.18 left to go in the fourth period. And with just a couple minutes left, everything is now on the court. All you have to do is focus on execution. Now the Barons take the lead by two scores, 41-37 now with 2.11 left to go. And another turnover from the Cougars. Brigman all by herself. Makes the easy layup, six point ball game. And you can see the players for Ansbach starting to doubt themselves a little bit now. Yeah, it's gotta be tough going from a tie game to down six that quickly. Reeves to door, looking to solace it's stolen. Morrison, the give and go, all by herself, converts. 
And the crowd can feel it now with 136 left to go. The Lady Barons running away with this ball game, transition buckets and layups. Onsbach's got their work cut out for them now. You could see they were trying to find Solis there, but Bitburg is wise to that game plan now. Coach Hunt can't take the side of this anymore. Calls a timeout. He wants to talk it over with his Lady Cougars with 124 left to go. Down by eight as the score is 45 for the Bitburg Barons, 37 Lady Cougars. And we did get a chance to check with the statisticians. Uh, Solis has scored 21 points for the Onsbach Cougars. That's Good more day. than half of their points. So check in the emails. We just got one from uh, somebody who lives in Australia. Sophia wants to give a shout out to her friend, Noah White, who lives in Bitburg. Not even on the team, just knows that they're both watching. Wanted to say hey back and forth. From Australia. Well, that's going to be tough to do. To do uh, I further away than might Australia. Be the exact opposite side of the world. I need someone to bring me a globe. You know what just dawned on me is that isn't it really, really warm and hot and sunny in Australia right now? It is summer down there. Summer down there right now. There is no snow like what we have outside. <sighs> well, it's nice and warm in the gym, so come on out and catch the action. We're going to have games for you back to back to back. More basketball action if you want to see it live. Fitness Center on Wiesbaden, or you can keep it locked right here to the Pentagon Channel streaming line on AFNEurope.net. If this score ends up being the final, or, or they, the way they stand right now, Bitburg will have been the number six seed in the tournament to upset the number one team. Lackey, the hoop and the harm. I was talking to her before Left -handed the game. Left-handed scoop. Talking to her and before one. the game, and she knew everything about the team. She's one of their leaders. That was huge. And it looks like that's going to be the nail in the coffin. A 10-point lead now with just a minute left and a free throw on top of that. This is going to be a very steep hill to climb for Ansbach. Listen, this crowd go nuts if she hits this one. Ja'Kaya Smith up the right side for the Cougars. Looking to get anything going. They just need a basket to get their confidence back. Chelsea Reeves, who hasn't had the biggest game today, shoots it from way outside, and it rattles around. Solis with the board, up and under, and good for her 23rd point of the ball game. So that foul that we thought should have gone to a one and one, the reason it wasn't a one and one is that it was an offensive foul. And even if the team is in the bonus, the offense fouls never result in free throws, just the possession. Are you going to attribute your information, Mason, or are you going to pretend like you've been coming up with this? No, no, I got some help from my buddy Tyler, who, or, or Justin, sent me that email. Give me a little heads up to the rules. Justin knows what's going on. He must be sitting at home with a rule book. No, no come on. Or he just played. 54 seconds left. Dodd's 2013 Tournament of Champions. You can hear the gym rocking at the Beesbaden Fitness Center. You're watching on the Pentagon Channel or streaming live on AFNEurope.net. Just proud and honored to be a part of an organization that's been providing service like this to military members and their families for 70 years. AFN, doing what we can to give you a little taste of home. During the regular season, Bitburg was 10 and seven, and Ansbach was 17 and one. Full court pressure now by the Cougars, broken down by Lackey, who's just gonna dribble it around as they, they go into the corners offense. Well, now they're just gonna try to run it out. Well, this really is a Cinderella story for the Bitburg team, coming all the way from the sixth seed to knock off the number one seed for the championship. And even though there was 45 seconds left on the clock when Bitburg brought the ball down, they didn't have to take that shot because there is no shot clock in high school basketball. Atia Brigman converting again and another steal as she's been doing it on both sides of the floor. With 15 seconds left to go, the Barons are up 49-39 over the Lady Cougars. And it looks like the story of this game is going to be the balanced attack that overcame the strong individual performances we saw in Ansbach. And I think once the Barons decided to go to that transition offense, they started getting easy layups and it really separated them from the Cougars. Their patience really paid off in the end. And that's it. The Bitburg Barons go crazy, kids. Go crazy as they storm the. Look at this. 
storming the, the court. I'm just smiling. I could just feel, I could just look down at them and see how happy they are, and it's making me smile. Just and a ton of emotion. As rough as this loss is for the Osbach Cougars, they still had an amazing season. They lost the first game and the last game, but in between, they won every single game they played. And, you know, they come home second. But just not enough as the Lady Barons take it. The Dodds 2013 Division II Ladies Championship of 49-39 over the Ansbach Cougars. And once again, if you want to keep it right here on the Pentagon Channel or watching around the world on AFNEurope.net, stay tuned. We've got Afnorth coming up against Naples, the Division II Boys Championship game, followed promptly by the Division I Ladies and the Division I Men's at 7 o'clock tonight. 7.30. But it's just going to depend on, you know, the games. We can't be exactly sure when they're going to end and how long they're going to go. So just keep it right here. There hasn't been a bad game all day. And I hope it stays that way because we've had some amazing finishes so far. And now we're going to go down to our silent reporter, Victoria Seacrest, who's got Coach Lynn Hairstone. I'm courtside with the Bitburg Barons coach, the winning team. Now, Coach, how does it feel to win this? It's fantastic. The girls earned it. They definitely did. Um, how, do, how do you think their playing was in the second half? Better. We still made mistakes, but we maintained the ball. We've scored some points, and we got a lead. Exactly. Well, congratulations, and enjoy your win. Thank you very much. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Miss Seacrest, for getting it. The comments from Coach Lynn Hairstone for the Bitburg Barons, the champions. And that's going to be the final ball game for five seniors. On the Bitburg team. It's got to feel good to go out on top. If you're watching continuing coverage of the Dodds 2000.